So I'm fully aware that this video should have dropped at least two weeks ago, but I'm working through a backlog of content now. I do apologize, guys. I'm going to get through to everything that I said I was going to get through to. The Shazam trailer reaction, the Brightburn trailer reaction, Us movie review, Stranger Things trailer reaction. They will be dropping as soon as possible. Check out my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to keep updated. All the goings on of my channel. Turn those post notifications on so you know exactly when a new video drops. And without further ado, let's talk some Captain Marvel. Now, as the movie has been out for a while now, this is going to be a full spoiler review. We're going to go deep into spoilers. As usual, I'm not going to speak about everything that happened in the movie. Just the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like. And I'm just going to wrap up and give my rating at the end. The newest movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it stars Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Um, even though they don't really actually say her name in the movie. Which I'm fine with. I feel like Marvel has got a nice balance of saying some characters' names, their superhero names. And not saying some others. It didn't bother me at all. And despite what a lot of critics say, I really enjoyed this movie. I've seen it twice now, and that's probably why it's taking so long for this video to come out, because I did have to go and watch it again, just to make sure that I did enjoy it. One of the main things that I liked about it were the callbacks. Um, a lot of people didn't like this, but this, for me personally, wasn't a problem. This is set in the late 80s to 90s, so there are a lot of throwbacks to things that we were aware of growing up, especially if you're my age, um, and the callbacks were amazing, so like... You had Blockbuster, you had Radio Shack, um, you had dial-up internet connections. There was a one scene about the dial-up internet connection. I actually forgot how long it took for you to connect to the internet back in the day. And that was hilarious. That scene was hilarious. Humour is standard Marvel humour. It was less Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy and was more Iron Man 1, which I enjoyed. Um, it wasn't too on the nose in some parts. In some parts, it was too on the nose. I feel like we didn't know anything about Captain Marvel, so we went in with little to no expectations. If you do watch the movie with little to no expectations, you will enjoy yourself. I feel like where most of the criticism from reviewers and stuff has come from is from having uh, an, an expectation that Marvel movies have to be Infinity War level now. Um, it's not in all cases, but I've heard a lot of people say that it wasn't that great or it wasn't as exciting as other Marvel movies, but you have to remember this is one, an origin story, this is two, an origin story about a character we know nothing about. And three, not all Marvel movies have to be Infinity War level. Like Brie Larson, I feel like she was very good as Captain Marvel. I like her as the Captain Marvel character. I'll say that first and foremost. I enjoyed her performance. I feel like she struggled a little bit with the direction and the writing of the movie. And that's not her fault. You can see that there's scenes that I really liked her in. And there, there would be scenes that you really liked her in. And there's scenes where she came across as very wooden, very stoic and very weird, sort of. Where she comes off as very sarcastic and very endearing, but endearing in a sense that we don't really know your character. So your little quirks and stuff are very strange to us. So yeah, I enjoyed her character as a whole, but you could see that there were times where the direction of the movie or the writing of the movie took a turn in which it was contradictory to the character that they already had established. So that's when you would see her start using like Tony Stark traits or the sarcasm bits that I was talking about earlier. Um, the action sequences, I think the action sequences were a big missed opportunity. There was not one fight that I could be like, that was amazing. There were some parts of the fights that were good. It wasn't a big set piece that I found really, really outstanding. Um, the fight with, between her and her Kree brethren, the ones that betrayed her, it was completely undercut by the fact that they played the I'm just a girl music track in the background and there was no emotional weight like these people were people that had taken care of her and that she'd been protecting for six years they were basically her family They'd been lying to her for this whole time and there was no conversation as in why did you guys do this like you lot were supposed to be my friends there wasn't any weight to it it was literally like okay Kree were good and Skrulls were bad and now Skrulls are good and Kree are bad and now we have to kill them all it there was no transition that helped the viewers and even the characters transcend that. There, there was a lot of weight that there a lot of feels that could be put into that moment, but there wasn't. I did like Nick Fury in this movie. I think the de-aging technology was on point. It didn't bother me at all. It didn't even look like CGI. 
So I don't know what kind of technology Marvel's fucking with, but they need to stop before the FBI gets involved 100% because I don't know what's going on over there. We didn't get any indication of how Nick Fury at the end of Captain Marvel turned into the super spy, stoic, I'm going to keep secrets from everyone, including myself, type of Nick Fury that we have in further movies. The action scenes, the fights that happened that were really close combat, they were really weirdly shot. The action scenes themselves and the choreography could have been a lot better. I just want to touch on the fact that Nick Fury lost his eye via a flurkin and I, when I first watched it that annoyed the hell out of me because if you watch Winter Soldier he says that the last time he trusted someone he lost an eye. I feel like they put this part in the movie after they didn't really have a, a, a reason for why he lost his eye it was just an afterthought but the thing I did like about it on second viewing is when Talos was like no because that was hilarious because it was just the audience feels like bro are you telling me that this is what happened and this is why like you lost an eye fam like when the cat scratched him, I did not even realise that it was that bad. Half his vision is gone now. And I didn't even clock. It, it, was, it was just such a, such a throwaway thing. And I feel like some in some way it was a big fuck you to the viewers. Another standout from this movie was Talos. Talos. Ben Mendelsohn did an amazing job. Even though he wasn't the villain, I enjoyed his character immensely. He was where most of the comedy came from. I know they tried to put comedy here and there other than him. But for me and my, my own humour... He was the funniest part of this movie. Maria and Monica Rambo, the characters were amazing. I loved them so much. Just for the point that this movie didn't have anything that in terms of stakes or any sort of character development until those two were introduced. The one scene with Maria speaking to Carol about how hard it was for her to lose her friend and then have to raise her daughter by herself and stuff like that. And the fact that no one wanted to talk about the mission that she had di apparently died on. It was heartbreaking. And it was just like, this is what this movie needed. It needed some heart and it didn't have anything until those characters were introduced. So for the performances, well done. From what I've seen so far and what I've had a problem with, Carol Danvers does not seem as powerful as the Russo brothers have stated that she is. They stated that she's the strongest character in the MCU. In this movie in particular, they haven't shown that, but obviously it's an awakening story, it's an origin story. So her powers did awaken this movie. So it would be very interesting to see how in Endgame, her powers are different from the Carol Danvers that we've just seen because it's a 20, 30 year gap in time. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how, one, how she's mastered her powers. Even in the fight scenes where she did awaken her powers, she was still struggling a little bit. Um, and two, how her powers have grown because at the moment it's flight, invulnerability. She has some super strength from the Kree blood that she has already and the photon blast. At the moment, the bar is Thor catching a dying star to the chest. So she has to do something that's even better badder than that. Anyways guys, that was my review on Captain Marvel. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about the movie. Let me know if I've missed anything out that's worth talking about. We can have a little discussion about it. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The links will be in the description below. Turn those post notifications on so you can see when I update a new video. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this review. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Taylor about the fucking flex.